Hello everybody and welcome to the MCC 16 pre-show. We are not the Knox crew or affiliated with them. We are just a group of fans here to give you our commentary and analysis before MCC 16. I am your host Lucario and today I am joined by... Hello, I am Mystery. I work here apparently. I'm Joey. How's everybody doing today? I'm Stein, and I am not a Technoblade Stan. Before we get started, remember only 40 creators can be in each MCC, and it's up to them and Scott if they want to play. Also, if you want more MCC esports style content like this, subscribe to stay up to date with our videos. All right, now let's take a look at the teams in this MCC and what they might need to do to get that win. Starting off with the Red Rabbits, the Dream SMP team of Tommy, Wilbur, Rambu, and Filza. This team should rely on their good average high skill per player to do good in games like to get to the other side and battle box late in the event. But in reality, they can do good in nearly any game. Next up is the Orange Ocelots. With Puns getting second overall and first in survival games during MCC 14, and Tabo doing the same with Sky Battle and MCC 15. So if those two continue to pop off in PvP, and Puffy and Shovel can return to their previous glory, this team may have a very easy path to dodgebolt. The yellow team has H-Bomb, Captain Sparkles, George Not Found, and the newcomer Pong. On paper, this team isn't the strongest. They're definitely going to be reliant on the H-Factor bringing them to dodgebolt. H-Bomb's going to have to unify a team with completely different skill sets and styles, and I would argue that if this team won, it would be H-Bomb's most impressive victory yet, even more impressive than the MCC 9 Blue Bats. On the Lime Llamas, we have a strong duo of Quig and Kratzy, followed by the Team Rocket duo of Nikki and Jack Manifold. This will be a team that's relying on PvP games for Quig and Kratzy to show off their skills in Battle Box, in Sky Battle, and potentially survival games as well. At the end of the day, it's going to be up to those two to have strong performances, but also get strong support from Jack and Nikki. As Jack has shown good skills in Ace Race, and Nikki has shown very good skills in being a sandkeeper in Sands of Time. Next up, we have the Green Guardians, consisting of the Orion Sound, Sylvie, RT Game, and Sapnap. We have the returning champion Sapnap from MCC 15. We'd really need to see him give off another strong performance, almost as strong as the last one, but as well see him step into the leader spot as Ollie, Sylvie, and RT don't have the best performances in this past, especially RT, who is returning to this event after such a long break. But if Sapnap does good and keeps the team momentum going, we could see each player pop off in a few games separately, and maybe the team could do really well. We've also got the Cyan Creepers. Now, let's start by addressing the, addressing the obvious. Yes, Pizza Hut got 41st last MCC in a 40 player event. But let's not use this internet as a way to forget how good of a player he actually is, as he did get first overall two events ago. And keep in mind that MCC 14 featured free PvP games, so getting those games played again might be the strat here. And that will make sense considering Preston is on his team, who's not only a good friend of Pete's, but also who used MCC 15 to show us that he might not actually be so rusty in PvP. You also got Spifey and Pearl and Moon, who usually act as great support players, especially Pearl who made it to Dodgebolt in both MCC 12 and MCC Pride, as an event in which she got 11th individually. So as long as this team can build some good chemistry early on, it should be smooth sailing for them. Next up are the Aqua Axolotls with Tubbo, Fundy, Antfrost, and 5up. This team seems to have all the necessary skills to win, with Tubbo and Ant holding down PvP, Fundy for movement, and 5up being a good all-around support player. What this team seems to be in need of is leadership, and I don't know about you, but I was noticing during Antfrost's stream in MCC 15, he seemed to be taking on a partial leadership role, so we could see Antfrost actually taking the leadership role for this team and bringing them into Dodgebolt. Next up is the Blue Bats, excuse me, the Sapphire Simmers, a team favorite made up of James Turner, Dr. Gulon, Critic Zeus, and Vixella. This is a team that while the fans love them, the audience loves them, everyone involved loves them. Well, we're just hoping to see the hashtag not last, and that's a win in our book, and they're gonna do that through getting in some good practice this coming weeks, as well as having some team practice together, and then just keeping up their energy and popping off in the games they can. Up next on the Purple Pandas, we have Scott Smajor, Smallish Beans, Green, and Fruit Berries. This team looks very strong in the game Build Mart, so if we see this game 8, this would be very good for them. 
They also have Fruit Berries, one of the best PvPers, so if he leads the way in some of the PvP games like Survival Games and Battle Box, the rest could follow suit and we could see a very strong performance into make making their way into Dodgeball. And last but not least, we've got the Pink Parrots. This team will be very interesting to watch, as their strengths tend to vary. Dreeb is undoubtedly cracked at PvP, which he showed last event by getting second in both Sky Battle and Survival Games. CVP was able to get his first ever top 10 last event, but he showed off more skill in movement games. His team really excited to get to reside in Ace Race, where he finished 4th. Bad Boy Halo, while not giving off the best first impression back in MCC 14, did do rather well in movement, but also did very well as a team player, a skill he might have picked up from while hunting his now teammate in the manhunts. And last but not least, Finster acts as the flex player here. He's always acted as a great support player in the past, so if all four players can show off their skills and Dream can take the lead, this team may be the underdog to watch out for. Alright, now let's take it over to a new segment called Minigame Meta. Alright, and we're here with a new segment called Mini Game Meta. Lucari and I will be taking you through the games and what is the best strategy to use in each one of them. I'll start us first with the easiest game to understand, Hole in the Wall. We've seen a lot of different strategies of getting around and through walls, but really the best case, take it slow, communicate with your team, and don't get cocky. Make sure to take the guaranteed jumps to get through, and if all else fails, hit the spacebar. The second game is Ace Race. There's two main aspects to this meta. Part one is just keeping a level head. You'll see this on the practice server where if a streamer messes up a single part of a single run, they'll just ditch the run and try again. You can't do this on the actual MCC day. If you mess up, you need to just keep going. Those who can do that end up with much better times and are much more relaxed during the event. The other meta is to watch the tester VODs and the best laps from the actual MCC players to see what the best route is to take through every Ace Race map. Very true. Similar to Ace Race in Sky Battle, it's about remaining calm under pressure. They get a lot of different items, including Ender Pearls, TNT, Creepers, and it's about utilizing everything you have to its maximum potential. One of the easiest ways to do that is what we saw from Tapple in this past MCC where he made the widest bridge you've ever seen because they have infinite blocks to use. So the team that does the best in Sky Battle is the one that uses all their resources and makes sure that they are calm under pressure. That is right. Another PvP game that has different strategies for different types of players, survival games. Mainly the strategy is to run away from spawn at the start because you won't get many items from the middle and it is very risky when PvP turns on, but once you run away and you go start gearing up on the edges of the map, for the PvP based teams, you go out and hunt for weaker teams or you pick off individual players just to rack up those kill points. While if you're not a PvP team, the best option is to hide and go clean up the ends of fights so you can try and get as many points as possible. Well, not similar to survival games, Parkour Tag is definitely a team-heavy game. As a hunter, the best strategy is to just have target prioritization of which runner you're trying to get and to make sure you stick to them, but also take advantage if one of the runners stops paying attention to get a free quick tag. On the runner side, it's all about communication. The more they communicate about where the hunter is, the better they do. And even Dream and Sapnap had success before with having a pre-planned runner's route and then moving in a circle the whole time to stay ahead of the hunter. Another movement game to get to the other side has a few strategies that you can follow. One of which is to get out of the way, avoid, all the, avoid as many players as possible so you don't run the risk of getting punched off and making it to the end as reliably as possible. Another reliable strategy is to follow a fast player like Fruit Berries or Illumina to get to the end as fast as possible, not getting first, but second or third. And the last but reliable strategy is to secure that team bonus. So maybe you have a really good bridger on your team like Illumina who will bridge across the entire map for your team, giving you that sweet team bonus, which is very necessary to do good in that game. Now to everyone's favorite game, Big Sales at Build Mart. This is a game that's all about communication. Teams have found success with a runner strategy where there's three builders and one runner that just gathers resources while the other three do the building. But at the end of the day, it's about communicating what blocks they need, being as efficient as possible when getting those blocks, and then making sure when you place them, you put them in the right place. Up next is the most strategical of game possibly in the entire event, Battle Box. 
there's two main strategies for PvP and non-PvP teams where the non-PvP teams rush in and place the wool as fast as possible with maybe one player defending all the wool placers, while the PvP teams go in and kill each player as fast as possible, trying to get as many points as possible. Another thing to remember is to maximize the usage of the kit items, as they can be very useful when used properly, such as Sapnap using the Depth Strider boots to flank enemy teams. And then, everyone's real favorite game, Sands of Time. Obviously all the teams use the same strategy of having a sand keeper in the middle to keep track of time and put sand in it, so it really comes down to the finer details of the exploring part for those players. That means utilizing carpets well, so you know where you've been, and what's been already completely explored, using torches to cut off spawners as soon as you get to them and then breaking them to get coins, and then also having that communication to identify where vaults are, where vault keys are, and what you need to unlock them and get all of those coins. Up finally is Dodgebolt, the final game of MCC. It has had a few winning strategies used before. The, one of the big ones is the funneling strategy, where if you have a powerhouse player like Dream or Technoblade on your team, you funnel all of the arrows to them and give them the shots as they're more likely to get that hit. Or if you don't have a phenomenal player like Dream or Technoblade, you line up multiple shots at the same time to maximize your chances at hitting the dodging players. And with that, that's our breakdown of the games that we are already pretty confident will be in the SimCC. And now Stein and Mystery will take it over for this or that. And now it's time for the segment we all know and love, This or That. We're going to be shown two possibilities, and we have to decide which one we think is more likely. Mystery, are you ready? I am so ready, Stein. Let's get into it. All right. Our first This or That segment is, will Pete or Fruitberries get first place individual? Okay. That is a hard one, but personally, I think it's going to be Fruit, and here's why. Obviously, both players are extremely good, but... Obviously, looking at past events, Fruit didn't do too well in MCC 15, only getting 19th place. Fruit has been on a team that's come in last place. So now that he's on a team that is projected to make Dodgebolt, I think with that star power around him, he can pop off and get first individual. What do you think? Well, I'm going to go a little controversial here because I don't think it's going to be either Pete or Fruit getting first individual. I think Tapple is actually more likely to get first place. Tapple has been popping off this season. And I know MCC 14, he had a he had a bit of a, a choke, but in MCC Pride, he did incredible. In MCC 15, he also did incredible. I think he is on a path to get first individual here, especially with support from a co-star like Puns. What's the next one? All right, our next question is who will have a higher placement, Puns or Sapnap? Okay, well, this is a callback to last event with the bet. So the question is here, is Puns gonna get revenge on Sapnap? And I think he will. Because there's two points you need to look at here. The first the first one is that Puns is generally more consistent than Sapnap. In the four events that he's been in so far, Puns has made it to Dodgebolt three times. That's three quarters of the events. And second, we also gotta look at their teams. Sapnap, after having that monster event last time, got nerfed, as the green team isn't the strongest one statistically. Meanwhile, Puns is, like you said earlier, is placed with Tapo, which is a very strong duo, so I think this is gonna be Puns' chance to, so to shine. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, I completely agree. I think Puns is also going to get a higher placement than Sapnap. Whereas Puns, I'm sure he's familiar with Tapple and Captain Puffy, and he has a strong team around him that can help support him and get a higher placement. So with that, we move on to our next question. Who will get their first win, Grian or Captain Sparkles? All right, well, personally, I think Grian and Captain Sparkles are both on teams that are projected to do well. So I'm not going to talk as much about their path to Dodgebolt as who has a better chance of winning Dodgebolt. And to be honest, I have to go with Grian here. Captain Sparkles we've seen in Dodgebolt three times now, one in literally the last event, and both times he hasn't done very well with shooting. Meanwhile, Grian, while not winning in his MCC 13 appearance, did hit a few shots showing that he is pretty cracked with a bow. And overall, this will come up with my, in my predictions, but I think that Purple is just the better Dodgebolt team here. So yeah, I think should it come down to Dodgebolt, Green's going to stand a better chance. I also agree. I think Green has been put on a stronger team in the Purple Pandas with uh, better chemistry and a more consistent style and skill set. 
Yellow's gonna struggle to find a cohesive dynamic, and if they do win it, I think it's gonna be because of a Hail Mary comeback in the last few games. I honestly doubt uh, that we're gonna see a dominant performance from Yellow as much as we're gonna see from Purple. All right, and for our next question, which game's gonna be skipped? Survival games or Build Mart? If I'm being honest, I think it's actually gonna be survival games that get skipped because ever since survival games came back, we saw it in MCC 14, all of Red won, lots of points. In MCC Pride, Aqua won, they got an insane amount of points, which put them in first place. And then Red did the same thing in MCC 15. So if you're not a front runner team, playing survival games, especially towards the end, is definitely not the way to go for you. Since Orange is one of the frontrunner teams, and personally I think their strong suit is PvP, people are going to want to make sure that Orange cannot dominate that game. So I think survival games might not get played here. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. I think it's going to be Build Mart that's going to get skipped. We've been seeing a huge trend of more and more PvP games being played in Season 2, especially in MCC 15 when there was actually the option to skip a PvP game, it still ended up getting played. I think there's more teams that are going to want to avoid Build Mart than teams that are going to avoid a game like Survival Games. Alright, well, I guess we finally found one we disagree on. Alright, what's our last one going to be, Stein? Our last one is Punk. Will he be in the top 20 or bottom 20? Ooh, okay. So, Stein, I know he's on the Dream SMP. I know he likes to play Bed Wars. That's about it. So, pretty much the only thing I have to base this off of is the fact that being a newcomer in MCC is hard because it's your first time playing the games. Everyone else has played the games a bunch, so yeah, it's going to be hard. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, mystery, MCC 15, free newcomers in the top 20. But here's the thing. What those newcomers did that not many newcomers have done in the past is practice the games. Because with the practice server, not obviously not all of the games are there, but you can get pretty good at the ones that are there. So, unless Punk does the same thing and starts grinding on that server, I don't see a reason to put him into top 20, unfortunately. I'm going to go off of the fact that I know he is really into building on the Dream SMP and he's always taken a more casual role in the storyline. I don't see Punk as being much of a, of a grindy player, someone who's willing to put in hours and hours of work to get better at something. He seems to be a, a much more casual and lax player, and he seems like more of a builder than anything else. And that combined with the fact that he's a new player, I also agree with you that he's going to get bottom 20. All right. Well, it looks like we're back to agreeing then. Well, that is it for this or that. So now we're going to head on back to the main desk for our predictions. Okay, let's start off our predictions with who we think will place in the top three, as well as a Dark Horse player who will possibly surprise us. Starting off in my top three, I have Tapple, Pizza Hut, and Puns. I think the Tapple Puns duo is absolutely powerful. I mean, powerful duos are seem to be the new meta of MCC teams. So I think those two are going to do amazing. And I think it's Pete's Redemption Arc, guys. And as for my Dark Horse, I chose Captain Sparkles. He's a good player overall. He's always done very well in the past MCCs, despite the dodgeball curse. And this is his first time teaming with H-Bomb. And as we all know, H-Factor is absolutely a thing. He boosts his team scores. So I think Captain Sparkles and H-Bomb is a well-needed duo. Mystery, what do you think? I almost agree with you. So my top three are Punch first, Tapple second, and Fruit third. Now, the reason I decided to put Punch over Tapple is, like I was saying earlier, Punch has proven himself to be way more consistent. He gets top 10 most of the time, and he's been in dodgeball once again three out of the four events he's been in. Meanwhile, while Tapple does usually do well, he's had some rougher performances such as MCC 14 on the Cyan Creepers. So while I don't think one of them is necessarily going to carry each other or anything, I just think Punz has the better chance of getting more coins, which is why he's in first and Tapple in second. And Fruit in third, that one, I think it's just that now that Fruit's on a team that has a good shot at making dodge bolt, he has a better chance of doing well, and, and for my Dark Horse, I'm going to go with Pearlescent Moon, because Pearl, whenever she's on a good team, she tends to do well herself, because in MCC 12, her team was able to make it to dodge bolt. In MCC Pride, not only did they make it to dodge bolt, but Pearl got 11th individually. So now that she's on a great team again, I think she has the ability to really pop off here. So Mystery, uh, I'm curious, you say Pearl is your Dark Horse player, and I think that's a really interesting point. What games do you think she's going to earn the most points in in order to surprise the world with, with her performance? Alright. Well, first of all, Hole in the Wall, Australian Ping, let's go. 
But on a more realistic and not weird note, I think she's going to do really well in team games such as Build Mart and Sands of Time. Because like I was saying earlier, it's when she's on teams with good players that she tends to thrive. So all she has to do is find good ways to communicate with her teammates and they can do amazing with her maybe not taking the helm but playing a strong role. I think that's a really good point. All right, I'll move on to my predictions. I have first place Tapple, second place Pete, and my third place is Fruit. Tapple's been getting really good individual placements recently with MCC Pride and MCC 15. I think he's on the brink of a first place. Um, I think Pete is Pete and therefore will do as good as Pete normally does, which is incredible, and Pete will get second. Uh, same with Fruit. I think Fruit will have a bit of a redemption arc. Uh, he's been getting a bit lower placements recently, um, and I think it's time he returns to the glory of the last several MCCs of Season 1, where he consistently did really good. My Dark Horse player is Jack Manifold. I saw his potential when he popped off an ace race in MCC 15. He seemed to adapt to a team dynamic that didn't necessarily suit him, uh, especially with Captain Sparkles not allowing uh, swearing on his streams. Um, but anyway, Joey, what do you think of your individual prediction? Well, I'm agreeing with most of you. I have Pete number one overall, Fruit in second, Puns in third, three players we've seen a lot of. And I think Pete's going to get his redemption, Fruit's going to get his redemption, and then Puns is going to show us that he is an S tier of season two players. Whereas my Dark Horse player, it's Pete's teammate Preston. Not only did Preston finish 12th overall in his first MCC, I think he easily finishes top 10 this one because not only does he get more experience being the second event, but he's also teamed with his good friend Pete, who are friends from way back in the competitive Minecraft scene before we even had all these events. So I think that familiarity will really help him perform even better. So, um, Mystery and Joey, I noticed that you guys both ranked puns higher than Tapple. I thought it was almost a given that Tapple would do better than puns. What makes you guys think that puns is going to do so well? Well, I'll go first for this one. Personally... I think it can go either way. I'm not necessarily saying that Puns has a guaranteed place over Tapville. They're both very insane. It's just that we look at things such as PvP, they're both really good at that. Movement games, they're both really good at those. But Puns' teams, like I was saying, they generally tend to place higher overall. So I think when it comes to team-based games and leadership, I think he suits the role better in those than Tapple does. So, well, once again, he may not be the carry. I think he'll be more of a team leader than Tapple will. I think just because of the way individual coins pan out for each of these games, while Tapple is really good at Sky Battle, you have to win several rounds to get a lot of points, and we've seen puns be a grinder for games like Ace Race, and now with the point bonus you get for scoring high in Ace Race, that nets you a lot more individual coins, which will ultimately put puns above Tapple on the leaderboard, even if they both had a similar amount of their team's overall multiplied coins. Um, Lucario, you had Tapple above puns. Do you have anything to add in terms of a counter argument why Tapple might end up doing better? Um, I'm just looking at it as more of an individual skill perspective. Personally, while I do think both players are absolutely insane at the game, I do think Tapple has a higher skill ceiling than puns. Mainly just from the experience that we've seen Tapple, he's always been playing Minecraft at a high competitive level. So I feel like it's just he's just more used to this and he has higher to go in terms of how well he can do. We've never seen him reach his full potential in games like survival games because he's an amazing PvPer, but we've never seen him get that full round win that he's definitely capable of. So I definitely think if we see him just do good in one of those games, or if he continues to do good in Sky Battle, we could see Tapple in that first position over Puns. And with that out of the way, let's get to the moment we've all been waiting for, our predictions for the teams of MCC 16. For my predictions of MCC, I think Orange and Cyan will get to dodgeball and Orange will triumph. Tapple Puns is the pinnacle of a, of a and powerful MCC duo that we've seen do successful so far. Same thing with Pete and I think Preston because Preston is a really good player that we haven't seen with experience, so this is his chance to really fulfill his prophecy basically with Pete to do well in MCC. And I think Orange will beat Cyan in Dodgebolt just because Orange has just overall stronger Dodgebolt players in my opinion. For my Dark Horse team, I picked Yellow because we've always seen H-Bomb bring unlikely teams to Dodgebolt, and this should not be an exception. Captain Sparkles and George Not Found are all great players in their own right, we've seen them do good before, H will only make them better. Add on Punk, who I don't know how well he will do, 
but H-Bomb is certainly a good player to have on your first team. So, I do agree with you, Orange is going to make dodgeball their crack team. But for the second team, I actually have to give Purple the edge here. They've got Smallish, Beans, Green, and Smajor, players who are all really good at Minecraft, so when you throw Fruit on there, he's going to be able to carry like crazy. Now, in terms of who I think will win Dodgebolt, I do actually have to give this one to Purple as well, and here's why. Both teams have really good Dodgebolt players. Orange has Puns and Tackle, and also Shovel, who obviously did the 1v2 clutch back in the day. And Purple has Smallish Beans, the 1v3 champion, and Fruit Berries, who's just very cracked with a bow. However, since both teams are really good at dodgebolt, we have to look at who has the highest chance of throwing in dodgebolt, and I think that's Orange, because when we look at Tapo and Puns in their previous dodgebolt performances, when Tapo was in MCC Pride, he did do really well in the first round, but that was about it for him, and Puns, across MCC 14 and 15, he was in both dodgebolts, he only hit one shot, so it's not looking too good for them. And my Dark Horse team is Pink, because while Dream is obviously probably going to be the carry of this team, we shouldn't ignore the fact that Bad Boy Halo, CBK, and Finster are all pretty good players. The problem is, it's just they don't look as good compared to Dream, but individually, they have their strengths, and I think if they pull their strengths together, they can pop off. Alright, well, Mystery, I gotta agree with you that uh, Orange and Purple are going to be the ones in Dodgebolt, but I disagree on who's going to win. Uh, I have Orange winning Dodgebolt over Purple. I think Orange overall has just a little bit more talent. I think uh, Puns is no longer being expected to carry in Dodgebolt because he has Tapple with him, who is also really, really good. And you mentioned how um, Tapple didn't do so well in MCC Pride, but that's only because he was shot early. If you leave Tapple alive, he is going to wreak havoc. And on top of that, they have Puffy and Shovel who have also had good dodgebolt moments in the past and are capable of holding their own. Now, my Dark Horse team is going to be the Lime team. Um, I think y'all are sleeping on the Lime team. Because MCC recently, like I've said, has been all about duos. And Kratzy and Quig, now that is one heck of a duo. They can really pop off in a lot of different games, especially in movement. If we get any sort of movement games near the end, they have the potential to skyrocket into the top two. And with Nikki being with a bunch of players who are supportive and a lot of players that she's already teamed with and knows, she's going to be capable of delivering her best performance yet. And also with Jack, Jack has shown a lot of potential of dramatically improving, especially with Ace Race and how he was able to fit in with the yellow team last MCC. I think Lime has a potential to surprise the world. What do you think, Joey? Well, I agree with Lucario that Cyan makes Dodgebolt because Pete and Preston is a scary team nonetheless. But I disagree with the rest of you because I'm putting the Red Rabbits as the other team in Dodgebolt. This is a team that has three players that have all been in the top 10, two players that have consistently been in the top 10 of that, with Rambu who is outside top 10 on his first performance but very close to making it in. So I think it's a team that's underrated because we see them as a content team, but I think they have the skills necessary to get it done at the end of the day. Although I will say though, if they made it to dodgeball against Cyan, I think Cyan takes home that victory just because it's Pete's time to shine. Get that dodgeball win again. And that means my Dark Horse team is red because I think everyone is overlooking them. But that's just my opinion on this. Obviously this is gonna depend on game order, so what do you think having the last game be survival games does for teams or build mart? What are the what are the games that if the last you think would really shake up the order and really knock your team into dodgeball or knock them out of dodgeball? I think build mart is a very niche game and there's, there's a lot of teams who are good at build mart that might not be as good at the other games in general. I think if build mart is played near the end, um, Purple will very likely sneak into Dodgeball. In fact, that's one of my predictions for what I think is likely to happen. I think we're going to have a lot of PvP and movement early on. Orange is going to get a, a dominant lead, but then Build Mart will happen near the end, and Purple's going to sneak into the top two and get into Dodgeball. I mean, personally, I think it just comes down to survival games. In the past two events, with Pride included, we've seen survival games in the finale, and it's what's boosted the first place team way ahead, putting them in Dodgeball. So I think in this case, the team that is the team that's going to be looking to do that is Orange. If they can get a good survival games as late on as possible, they're guaranteed in dodgeball in my opinion. 
I agree with you there. If survival games is game eight, which I do think is a high possibility, Orange will make it a dodgeball. The reason I see Cyan possibly getting in is we see a parkour tag finale. It's not impossible. We've seen parkour tag played late before. But if we see parkour tag, we have Pete and Preston absolutely insane at parkour, and then Pearl and Spifey can certainly pull their own up, up with the team. So that would could definitely pull, boost Cyan into dodge. And that wraps up our pre-show for MCC 16. We hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think down in the comments if you have any different opinions, or if you agree with us, or if you just want to say hi, just send us some love. We appreciate that so much. With that, we will see you all next time.